All right, this is uh, the spirit of Elijah and a prophet like Moses. And in Malachi chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, it says, Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great, dread, great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will return the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Now, Malachi wrote this prophecy. I believe it was 500 years before Yeshua was born. So if you, can, if you look at the span between what we see as uh, the Tanakh, or the Old Testament, and the Brit Hadashah, or the New Testament, there's about a 500 year gap in there of, uh, that's not uh, uh, dictated. If we turn to Matthew chapter 17, turn to chapter 17 verses 1 through 3, it says, Now after six days, Peter took James and John, uh, took James and John his brother, led them up to a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, his clothes became white as light, and behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now, the, the question has been asked, what are they talking about, or what was the meeting about? And actually, if we go to Luke's account, which we're not going to turn there, but Luke's account actually says that Moses and Elijah were there telling Yeshua that the time of his decrease was at hand, that he was dec to decrease himself in Jerusalem. So that was literally why Moses and Elijah came to Yeshua and told Yeshua, this is, it's time. Now it's time. And we know that God actually formed a tabernacle over the men that were on the mountain, being Moses and Elijah and James, John, and Peter. But... I don't know that this, well, it, I know that this is not the event that Malachi is referring to. The great and dreadful day of the Lord. We could really look at it as Moses and Elijah have come. Yeshua is there on the Mount of Transfiguration. They've come to tell him that his decrease is at hand and he's going to Jerusalem to die. That could be taken as the great and dreadful day of the Lord. But it's not. And... To understand why it's not, we need to look at the individuals involved. First, we look at Moses, and I'm sure we can see Moses' relevance. He, uh, he was a man of humility. He was a prophet, according to Deuteronomy 18.15 and Deuteronomy 34.10-12, through 12, which uh, Jasmine and my daughter read today during the service. We see that, that, that he was a prophet among his brethren. And actually in Deuteronomy 34, 10 through 12, it says that there were no greater prophet than Moses. And Moses uh, actually alluded that later a prophet like him would come from the midst of his brethren. But he put the, the people above his own life. I think if you look back on what we've looked at in Torah in the past, Moses put his life on the line, going before God, pleading for the children of Israel. And I'm pretty, and I'm, I know at one point he went before the Lord and said, if you're going to kill them, you need to kill me too. So Moses was not afraid to lay his life down for the people. And there was, there's much, much more that makes Moses, you know, the, the reasoning for Moses being here at the end uh, in, in Malachi chapter 4 that Moses was, is brought up, that the law of Moses is brought up, and the servant Moses is brought up. And then it talks about the prophet Elijah would be sent. And uh, Elijah was a well-known prophet. He's probably the most known prophet. And Elijah, he was a bold man of God, hit with the help of Elisha, which it's Eliyahu and Elisha in Hebrew. They were, they were able to defeat, completely wipe out the idol worship of the 9th century BCE and brought Israel back to their God where they had strayed from their God and he was he was known for his miracles and his healings and probably most well known for how he left this earth and we know that Elijah went up in a chariot of fire 
Elijah was recognized as a Tishbite. Now, it's commonly referred to that this was a city in, in Gilead. And they've never found this city. The only reference they have to the city is in the Apocrypha in the book of Tobit, which alludes to Tobit being in a city called Tishri. And when I was studying, I looked into the Hebrew. And in Biblical Hebrew, there is no word like Tishbite in all of it, in all of the, the, in all of the Hebrew. It's the only word of its likeness. But the word that's closest to it is actually Teshua, which means to cry out. In Zechariah 4, 7, it's referred to as a crying out. In Elijah, or I'm sorry, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, it's the, the crying out in the wilderness. One would come who, was, who would cry out in the wilderness. And also we have the, the Hebrew month Tishrei, which also, it, it has the same sound, which Tishrei actually means the head of the year or the beginning of the year, which could very well point that Elijah was more than just a prophet, more than just a great prophet, that he was actually a leader of men. He wasn't just out there acting alone and just him and Elisha going around and working. There were actually, if you look at the scriptures, there were a hundred prophets that were hidden from Jezebel. They were hidden in the caves. And Elisha, uh, you don't really see when Elijah is alive, but after Mount Carmel, you see that Elisha, when Elisha receives the mantle of Elijah, that these prophets, as he went from city to city, recognized the mantle, he had the spirit of Elijah upon him, and they recognized that as a leadership of sorts. So you could look at it as, as Elijah being the one who uh, is, is crying out in the wilderness. He's crying out to God. And we know that many, in many cases he ran into the caves uh, pretty much to hide. But if we look at Moses and Elijah together, Moses and Elijah... Uh, they're still authority figures to this day because of Malachi chapter 4. We look at the, them as authority figures in the synagogue. The rabbi actually sits on what's known as the seat of Moses. We know that Yeshua alludes to that as being an exalted seat that the, the Pharisees had lifted themselves up to. You sit on the seat of Moses. And Elijah, when we have Passover, we have a seat that's prepared at our Passover table for Elijah the visitor. We actually, during the Passover Seder, we'll have the children go and check and see if Elijah is outside the door. There's also a cup during the Passover Seder that is the cup of Elijah. So we've really, these two men are, the, are pivotal to Judaism. 